Hi, so let's design this simple circuit, the other two bit that is here with you from other plans, okay? The plan A and the plan B. So now it's going to be the plan C2. And the basic ideas in the specifications and planning, specifications are exactly the same. You see the true table, the symbol, and the, the timing diagram to start with, the same as usual. But this time the plan, in this way, plan C2, means uh, developing or inventing this kind of a structure, for example, consisting of several chips connected together in some way or another, right? This is what we are going to do to start. And once you have this circuit invented, your schematic in paper is going to be the time for developing and functional simulation, right? And developing will basically be will be something like this, okay? Developing the other two bits will be, as you see here, translating your schema into the RTL view by means of uh, the electronic design automation tool that you like and for a given target chip right and you will get you will get both the rtl view and as well the technology view that depends on the specific complex pld that you've chosen as target chip of fpga all right this is the point you will generate two circuits that are pretty much the same as you had in paper previously in advance ahead right in a way that the last section of your introductory circuit is going to be the functional simulation right something like this where your test bench has been uh, converted into well where, where your timing diagram has been converted into a test bench okay and this test bench runs in, for example, model sim, the simulation tool, so that your RTL is checked and you generate a wave uh, uh, that has to be pretty much, well, similar or, well, from which you will analyze, you see, by hand making annotations, uh, whether the outputs that the circuit generates are the ones that you are expecting okay so that is the, the last part you see a specify plan develop and functional simulator later on if you like you can add here to this project uh, gate level simulation we will do that just to measure the last future which is how fast is the second but now it's okay to finish this demonstration you see with this functional simulation that's all Hi, let me, uh, now that you are solving, for example, this exercise, this simple circuit, other two B, right? So now that you are solving this circuit using the plan A, based on any kind of equations that you get from the true table, or as plan B, you know, as a behavioral translation of the table, as a flowchart, or directly by means of some kind of a schematic, this is what you are doing now and you have that idea of the circuit fresh in your mind, you can as well think about the circuit organized uh, using the plan C2. Why not, right? It's the same circuit, other two bit that you have in mind, and this time the circuit is useful for something specific, for adding arithmetically just two bits, but it, it is for adding. So in this way, you can think, that this circuit may become something like that, right? That plan, uh, where instead of equations or instead of a behavioral interpretation, what you've got here is an interconnection of two chips of the same kind, this time other one bit. So what if I ask you to go and fetch the files, other one bit PhD, Okay, from the library that you've got of components that you've got everywhere in Dixis, you will find, for example, this circuit in P3 as an example of uh, arithmetic circuit. So you can use it to 
twice, two times, and in this way you can solve the algorithm. You see, A plus B plus carry in ge to generate the zoom out and the carry out, what is going to get from uh, this circuit, okay? Look at this, if you have A, for example, 0, 1, and B, 1, 0, you are simply uh, getting an 1 in the carry in, so this means a 4, and a 4 is represented like this. So this is what you get, S equals 0 and carry out equal 1. So why don't you do that this way, connecting others one bit together using chips? You see, every other is going to be a different chip or a different component. You, you see, that's a component. And this is a signal, you see. You have ports connected to the several inputs and outputs of the components plus additional signals that connect the components in between, you see, internally. So that's it. You have an entity and then when you go to the internal architecture of this entity, what you find here, for example, is something that simple. Two chips of the same kind connected together by means of a single wire that you name it, you see? This is SIG1, for example, a signal, a wire, you see, that is for connecting the carries, the same thing that you do here, you see, 1 plus 1 plus 0 is 0, and then you get the carry, you make available the carry from this stage to the next, right? That's it. So this is what is going to be solved by the circuit. If you are not sure about that, you can try as well, after inventing the circuit. You can try the same input vectors, for example, carry in equal 1, and then you have A0 and B0 is just 1, 0, you see, A is 1, A0, B0 is a 0, so look at this, 1 plus 0 plus 1 is just, uh, is just 2, right? So 0 in the zoom and one internally in this wire that is connected as the carry into the next. So now look at this. This one is added arithmetically with the A1 that is a zero and the B1 that is a one. So in this way you have another addition here. One plus one plus zero. This means that you've got another time a zero here in the zoom and one in the carry out as you are expecting from the analysis that you are organizing in the specifications. All right, so this is the plan, you see, in paper. And then what goes next in the analysis is to imagine the file location. You have to find some place to save the project, okay? So, for example, as usual here, CSD, P3, and other 2B, because this is nothing if you look at it as another arithmetic circuit. So it may be very well here in P3, other 2B, and now you have to think about the way this circuit is implemented using this plan. Look at this, you have the other one bit here, then you have the other 2B, which is the top, other 2 bit.bhd, and then you have the test bench, naturally, uh, you see, when talking about the specifications, you talk about the symbol, the true table, and then you think about as well about the timing diagram. So you, you have some kind of timing diagram where you see the performance of the circuit through several input vectors, and you calculate in advance, you see, the possible output that you've got here, you see. For example, 2 plus 3 plus 0 in the carry is a 5. This is what you get, 1 in the carry out, that means a 4, and 1 in the zoom, so this is the 5, and in this way. And you know, more or less, that from one vector to the next, you have to wait for some time. And here you see the vertical lines indicate this time, so you may say that, for example, this is mean pulse 3.3 microseconds, just to have a value, and then here you have a larger time, you see, and you may say that, well, this is, for example, 3.7 times mean pulse, and in this way you are organizing the timing diagram so that this device can be translated, nothing about inventing, but translating from an example given in Dixis 
you can translate that so that you have this second as well other two bit underscore testbench.bhd the one that is going to be used in testing right that is the the test bench all right and then you have to think as well because finally you have decided to use another one bit and you know the another one bit is solved in Dixis using the plan A, using the plan B, or uh, in several ways, not only in one way, but you also know that the, there is the plan C2 as well for solving this circuit as an example. For example, there is the possibility to solve this other one bit using the method of multiplexers, or the method of the coder. So this is what, for example, I'm going to plan here I'm, to make that, uh, that exercise a little bit more meaningful for you. You see, now the component, even if it's that simple other one bit, instead of being a single file, is going to be a multiple file again. So the other one bit, you see, if you are planning it using the method of the coders, you have to consider adding to your project another one, the decoder 3 to 8, taken exactly as it is from the tutorial in Dixis, right? So now you have very well understood that this project, to, to be able to be developed correctly for a given target chip, for example, the Max 2 from Intel, okay, and using Quartus uh, Prime, for example, uh, so that you get the schematics, you, you, you get this picture and the way this uh, Quartus Prime has decided to invent it using the, the internal resources, the logic blocks, you see, you have the RTL and the technology views here developed and then you can go and finalize the exercise test, testing that those uh, schematics works very well, just trying some values from the table. And you know that you have up to 32, you see, up to 32 uh, combinations to try, okay? By the way, this test bench, you can invent it just now, but if you have solved the circuit previously for using the plan A or the plan B, that well, it, this is what you did, you can use exactly the same test bench, right? So that's it, the full project discussed in paper, so now you can just go and develop that for real using the electronic design automation tools for getting schematics or for, uh, for getting output results like waveforms so you can discuss and see how much they are going to look like these ones that you have in mind from the specification section, right? That's a kind of uh, exercise that is uh, all right now, along with the many more that you have, the other 8-bit, the other 4-bit, and the, the comparators, you have many more examples using Plan C2, but just this one is another one that can be used as a starting point for you to get used to this Plan C2 that is fundamental in this introductory course on uh, circuits and systems. Okay, let's see now how it is possible to develop the project, okay? First of all, we have to go to Dixis and here we'll try to find the files to copy and adapt. For example, here in P3, down there, you can find several examples. For example, the component other one bit and why not? The version based on the plan C2, the method of the coders. So down there in the developing section, you can copy and save the link as, you know, in P3, in the folder other 2 bit, here is where you can place the other 1 bit based in this way. And you can do the same now with the decoder 3 to 8, which is the component inside the other 1 bit build using this plan and now you can you can search for more files for example here you have the other four bit 
that is based on the ripple carry technique, pretty much the same that we will do now for the other 2B. So it's a good idea to go and find the other 4-bit example from which we will uh, edit the adaptations. All right, so let's copy the other 4-bit in our folder, just changing the name of the file, other 2-bit, like this. Okay? And if you like, you can as well take with your project uh, the test bench. Why not? Let's try to find the test bench so that uh, so that we can find it uh, from the version A or the version B that you have developed. That's a good idea as well. Okay. In this way, you know exactly what is going on in the test bench as well when you are just solving the testing section. So here you are, right? The test bench that in the end is going to be the same for all the different plans. Here you are. You have this view that consists of showing you the other one bit, the other two bit, the other two bit test bench that you have inherited from other plants and the decoder 328 that is inside the other one bit. Okay, so now it's time for starting the modification. So replace the text. So this is an example of another two bit and go starting, you know, editing like this. This is the translation of the other two bit schematic that we have designed in the slide. Okay, so the first way, the first thing that you have to do is to adapt the entity. Let it be other two bit, just like this, deleting what is here an extra material like the Z output and adapting the range. So that's exactly the other two bit. So now you may go and think about the architecture. Once the entity that, by the way, is the same all the time for all the different plants, if you focus now your idea, your mind in the entity, in the, in the architecture, you see that you have a component, the other one bit, but when you talk about signals, there is not that many signals now. In our schema, we have simply a signal that we have named SIG1. So this is the only one that has to be left here. And after finishing with the signal, you see, what goes next, according to our schema, is to go fixing the connections, okay? That's it. Let's connect the ports directly to the components, because here in this schema there is not even a logic or anything like that, but simply the idea of instantiating the chip 1, that's another one bit, and the chip 2, that's another one of the same kind, right? So if you pay attention now where the chip 1 and the chip 2 are connected, you see that the chip 2 is connected to A1, B1, uh, while the chip 1 is connected to the A0B0, so pretty much as you've got here, except that now, for example, the output S0 is S parenthesis 0, and C out is just the SIG1 signal, just like this. And if you pay attention to the chip 2 in your schema, it is pretty much the same, except that now the CI is just the signal, SIG1 while the S0 this time is the S1 and the carry out is just the carry out like this. And now you can continue editing this file in the way that you can delete the other modules that you've got here and you can say something like this that is not required in this example or a schematic, uh, any other kind of logic and that's all uh, the idea of adapting, you see, the chip 1 and the chip 2 and the SIG. This is all you've got in your simple plan C2 model. Alright, so when you've got this file, the only thing left is to save this and now is your turn to start 
you know, the Quartus Prime project, for example, that will consist of every single file that you've got here. You can include as well the testbench if you like, but we will solve the testbench as usual. In some way, this is going to be an older version of the testbench, so we will go pretty much another time through the testbenching ideas. The first thing that you have to do here to start a new project in Quartus is to go and browse for the location. And the location we have decided to be P3 because it's plan 2 and we have decided to name the folder the usual way, other 2 bit. So the top name of this project is other 2 bit, but the name of the project is as usual, other 2 bit underscore PRJ, right? that way. So now you can add all the files in the folder, as you see, okay, all are identified correctly as BHDL files, and here is where, if you like, you can remove from the project that is bench because you will like to add it later, and exactly the one that you will adapt. So now you select the target chip, and if you don't remember which one, you can go to the Intel chips, and for example, let's pick up the Max 10 or the Max 2. That's another board that we've got in the lab. So that one, EPM 2210, is another chip that can be used for developing this simple circuit. You can paste the full name, be aware of the spaces and everything, because sometimes the filter do not include the spaces and the, the chip is not found. Whatever, you can say now the tool is model sim and you are using BHDL and you can watch the summary and finish. In this way, the machine will start organizing the project. All right. So I guess that now the only thing to that has to be taken here in consideration is very simple. Just click compile all so you can start the compilation process that depending on the computer takes just a, f a few minutes or something. So let the machine work. If there is a problem with the syntax in BHDL you, you will be marked here with some mistakes or whatever but in the end you can go this way until you get the final uh, a schematic, all right? That's the idea. you can just go through the several tabs to see how is going on the compilation process okay and this is what this synthesizer is, is doing is transferring your ideas now expressed as a text file into some kind of ideal circuit and real circuit that we understand uh, as RTL, register transfer level schematic, the ideal one, and technology view, the real one that depends on the specific FPGA or complex PLD that you have selected as the target chip. So in the end, what you've got here for this, this MAX2 chip is the full project now 100% compiled. So now it's time for going to the tab that says, uh, you know, tools. And in the tools section, you will, you will go down there to see the Netlist Viewer as usual. And here in the Netlist Viewer, you will be able to watch the RTL view and that that is what you've got right a new window representing the schema well uh, not exactly as you have 
uh, drone, but well, pretty much the same, right? So there is something here that can be uh, confusing. There is this arrow here connecting the chip 1 with the output of the chip 2, so that you, you, you may see that it looks right, but well, not that so much. So you better take care of this connection. You see, it is all, it is all right or not, you see? So I mean that the RTL is helpful, but because it's the machine who is doing that job of representing that circuit for you, it is better to go to the next stage, that is the testing idea, right? There is the other file that you can watch, okay? The other schematic. All right. But in some way, the architecture looks right because you have the chip one and you have the chip two and if you pay attention to the signals and the way you have connected the signals to the chip one and the chip two they look pretty much right okay so it, it even if the rtl doesn't look that correct well you you may insist on this because now if you go ahead taking a look at the technology view perhaps this one is better represented look at this you have the other one bit chip and the other one bit chip too both of them in some way ordered it the other one bit okay you can copy this image with your snipping tool and now if you like you can start making annotations or whatever that you have to say here all right this is a good thing to do in the end when the circuit already works okay so what you see here is that you've got this interpretation the, the chip one is the s0 and the carry out okay the carry out in some way is this wire that goes straight to the carry end of the next stage that consists of a1 and b1 and this new stage generates the carry out and the zoom one. So this circuit, perhaps the technology view as you see it here, looks better, okay? So it's a good idea to make annotations in these pictures so that you can take these pictures annotated and discussed like that to your reports. And this means very well that you did it. And that's an important idea. You have to do that yourself, okay? interpreting this kind of picture so now that the circuit looks right or at least uh, it's not something missing here it, it looks like that everything is here you can go advancing right and in order to advance you have to do that idea that i recommend you to do all the time to start a new test bench even if you have it from the other plans it's a good idea now that you are starting to do that, to do it again, because there is not a problem. You can copy the stimulus files, the processes and the constants. From So now is your turn. You see, you have it here in the stim simulation folder. But now, if you like, it's a good idea to name the one that you have copied here, alt or something. So, right. So. You can go down there to simulation, model sim, and copy it. BHT, you see, you can copy that one here. And now is your turn to rename it other 2-bit. Okay, let's see if we can do that correctly. Other 2-bit uh, underscore TV. And now let's change the file extension. Yes, BHD. So in this way, all the files look the same. And now, if you like, is your turn for adapting here in this textual format, the test bench. And the test bench, basically, apart from the instantiation of the component and the test that is solved automatically by this tool that generates this template, it consists of, in our courses, of just paying attention to the constant, right? So you go to the constant and you copy it as it is. So in this way, you don't have to worry about the syntax in the HDL for writing or placing constant, you see? Pretty much specific time, colon equal 3.3 .3 microseconds. So let's run that. You know that the, the simulation time is going to be 200 
microseconds just for solving these uh, several vectors okay so now is your time for copying that ones that are pretty much the one that you have solved for plan B or plan A so copy them here you see it's just as a practice with the benches because that is the idea perhaps doing that several times you realize what is going on here so for example now it's a good time as well for adding comments here for example that is that simple that's not a problem for you to try to add some comments for example here you are adding three one one with two one zero and one in the carrying just one of the 32 combinations so you are expecting six as a result but six is expressed as one zero in s and one in the carry out because the carry out remember it's two raised to the power two so that's a six in binary so you can do that for the remaining vectors if you like or some of them and now you may like to save this test bench so in this way it, it looks right okay you have everything you need now for starting or launching from the desktop or from the tools in Quartus Prime what is referred as a model sim functional simulation so let's go straight to the next step all right and the next step is that one starting a new project this time for simulating the test bench okay so the folder let it be the usual one other to beat okay but the project name it's as usual underscore functional underscore sim and the default library work functional because in some days we will generate another library work gate level but this time is a work functional for testing just the RTL view so now you have to add to the project okay all the files of interest that uh, generates you see as a single schematic even if it has different lawyers and this is a stratified hierarchy you see all the files that become part of this project and you immediately simply compile them all so that you get what you want all a series of green ticks so that means that everything is right so it's time for launching the simulation just like that you launch the simulation now and you try to find here the library that has been generated for your work functional and here pay attention what you have to test is the test bench because this one is the one that includes the input vectors the stimulus right so do you do that and you get this new frame where the machine organizes several windows and in some way you have to add to the wave you see we do that all the time the same way add to uh, it is uh, quite well it's, you, you go to the simulation library you get the instance and you say add to wave all the items in region in this way you've got this picture and now is your turn to arrange that uh, better for example separating with a divider the outputs and you can move every single signal to the right place and in the right order here it is it is especially right to use the same order that you've got in the two table so in the two table you have carry in a and b so that is a good idea to do it here the same so now the only thing left is as you see run the 200 or 300 microseconds to go to the end with the given stimulus so you zoom all and this is what you've got right everything goes fine in principle so now you can change the radix of these numbers because remember this circuit is an arithmetic circuit and some vectors here means uh, radix two numbers base two numbers so that is a good idea to use that radix to be to to generate a, a, a simpler verification that the circuit works properly well okay 
So that's it. With this picture, you can add now your text, okay, the way you like. Okay, for example, here you can say that you are adding, you, you see that very well, you see? Uh, 3 plus 2 plus 1, okay, no problem. All right, and you get 6, naturally, 1 in the carry and 2 in the sum. So this is 4 plus 2, that's it. Later on, you have another value, so the idea is that you get 4 because you are adding 3, you see, uh, plus 1 plus 0. So the second works as expected, you see. So that's the presentation. Okay, try to do that yourself in order to see if you understand this concept of plan C2, repeating many other ideas of this of the same kind like the test benches and quartus prime projects and etc all right